Hello, welcome to King Faisal University's e-learning program. Uh, this is uh, the introduction course to Renaissance literature. My name is Dr. Fuzi Slisli, and I will be your instructor for Renaissance literature. Um, in the next 10 minutes, I will explain to you uh, the main points about this class, the topics that we will look at, and the methods of teaching, questions of exams, and of course, uh, uh, we will look at the weekly reading. So, um, um, first, let me give you a course description. Basically, this course introduces the student to English literature of the Renaissance period. It offers a, an overview of the historical and cultural forces that produced the literature of the Renaissance. Uh, I repeat, it offers the student an overview of the historical and cultural forces that produced the literature of the Renaissance, the famous literature that we all hear of, the literature of Shakespeare, the metaphysical poets, the comedians, the tragedians, and so on. Uh, we want to look at the historical and cultural forces that helped produce that literature and we will give the student an overview of some of the major literary, artistic and dramatic activity of the period. So basically we're going to look at the historical forces that helped produce the literature of the Renaissance and we will have an opportunity to look at some specific examples of the literature of the Renaissance that includes some uh, drama, some poetry, some prose, and so on. The objective of this class, uh, very simply put, is to familiarize the student with the historical, cultural, and literary background necessary to understand the European Renaissance. The European Renaissance is a very important event that essentially gave us modernity, uh, what we call modernity uh, today, uh, it is commonly understood to have its origin in the European Renaissance. So from the European Renaissance, um, we started dating history of ancient, medieval, and modern, modern starting with the Renaissance. And this uh, three-party division, ancient, medieval, and modern, um, was given to us from the Renaissance. It's from the Renaissance period that this division uh, started being used and it is still in use today. So basically the objective of this course is to uh, allow the student to become familiar with the historical, cultural and literary backgrounds that are necessary for the student to understand the European Renaissance. It will try to help the student acquire proficiency, uh, meaning expertise, in reading key literary texts of the period, the key, some of the most important literary texts of the Renaissance. We want to allow, to help the students acquire the skills necessary, the proficiency and the skills necessary to distinguish the different styles, the different methods, and the tropes of the period. The teaching methods that we will be using for this class are basically lectures using PowerPoint presentations and we will have online live sessions. The textbook that uh, for this class, you basically we, uh, there is no specific textbook. You can study from the lectures and uh, in the next sections I will give you some further reading uh, of books that you can consult if you want to but uh, the presentations will present you with uh, substantial information to help you understand the course. As far as the uh, weekly reading or the weekly lectures uh, they will be divided as follows. So we have uh, lecture number one we look at the causes of the Renaissance. Uh, lecture number two will also look at the causes of the Renaissance. These two lectures will look at the uh, intellectual. The first one will look at the uh, question of ideas, the ideas that uh, developed 
uh, to allow the Renaissance to take place as an event. And then in the second lecture, also on the causes of the Renaissance, we will look at the economic and historical development that took place and allowed the Renaissance to take place. Uh, lecture number three, we look at the Italian roots of the Renaissance. Commonly, almost, uh, almost all histories of the Renaissance uh, tell us that the Renaissance starts in Italy. So we will look at this period in Italy where the Renaissance started. It, it's, it's a period famous for uh, being a, uh, for, for uh, consulting the works of the ancient Greeks and Romans. It's famous for the translations, the translation works of Plato, Aristotle, and uh, the poetry of the Greeks and the Romans. Uh, so most scholarship looks at the Italian, this uh, <coughs> period in Italy, as the birthplace of the Renaissance. Lecture number four uh, looks at the forgotten roots of the Renaissance in Al-Andalus, in Islamic Spain. This is a chapter of the Renaissance that, as we will see, has unfortunately not been covered by history, or by historians or cultural historians. Um, most analysts and historians tell us that, that the Renaissance starts in Italy, but there is a very important work that was done in Al-Andalus, in cities like Toledo, for example, uh, a lot of translation work, without which the Renaissance would not have been uh, possible. So this is, if you want, this lecture number four, we look at the Islamic contribution to the Renaissance. Lecture number five, we look at voyages and explorations. It will look, this is a time, um, it will look at the important uh, exploration that has been done by European explorers, the quote-unquote discovery of the Americas, explorers like um, <coughs> like Magellan, like um, uh, the uh, uh, Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese uh, explorers like Columbus, for example, uh, discovered new territories for Europe and discovered new trade routes which brought a lot of wealth which then was used to uh, develop education systems that created the culture of the Renaissance. So we will look at the contribution, the economic contribution that came as a result of the voyages, the travels and the explorations uh, of the 14th, 15th century. Uh, lecture number six, we will look at, uh, it's called from scholasticism to humanism, the rediscovery of the classics. Basically, this lecture will explain to you how uh, uh, Europe moved from a culture that is known as classicism, which was predominant during the Middle Ages, and moved to a new culture that became known as humanism, uh, a very important intellectual and cultural tradition that's still common today. A lot of people still call themselves humanists today, and the educational systems that are used throughout the world are still in the humanistic tradition. So this humanistic tradition also has its birthplace in uh, the European Renaissance. So we will, move, we will look at the transition in Europe that happened from scholasticism to humanism. And um, most important about this transition is the fact that Europe discovered the work of the ancient Greeks and Romans. And it's this discovery of these Greek and Roman texts that allowed the development of humanism, uh, which uh, then takes on a life of its own and is still predominant today, as I said. Lecture number seven <coughs> looks at Renaissance poetry. Uh, we will look at the development of Renaissance poetry from Petrarch, the Italian poet Petrarch, to Shakespeare. Of course, uh, both of them were great poets, but we will look at the specific characteristics of each of them, and we will look at the development of uh, the sonnet, especially. It's uh, the poetic form called the sonnet. We will see how it develops from Petrarch to Shakespeare. Week 8, 
is called the glory of arms and letters and looks at the work of Edmund Spencer and the poetry of the English poet Edmund Spencer. He was a man that combined uh, poetry with political service for the state. And this is a very common thing that you see in the Renaissance. Most poets and artists and writers of the time combined literary and political work together. And perhaps no one is more famous than Edmund Spencer, so we will look at his contribution in that sense. Lecture number nine, uh, we we'll look at Renaissance theater. We will see how Europe moved, how European drama moved from being religious drama to becoming secular drama, from a drama that always talked, uh, that always was about religion, to a drama that became uh, theater and drama about everyday life issues. For week 10 uh, is also about the uh, theater of the Renaissance, or in a way it looks at uh, theater, the place of theater in Renaissance societies. Uh, it's uh, very important uh, to understand the role of theater in Renaissance society. This is a time where they had no televisions, no videos, no entertainment, no uh, newspapers. So the most important form of communication in a sense was the theater because um, it's the only place where you find people over 500 people who would go and attend a play. Uh, people did not gather uh, around a newspaper or a TV program or so the, the, uh, the, the biggest form of mass communication was the theater. So we will look at the theater in Renaissance society, we will look at the buildings, the costumes, the companies, the theater companies that worked at the time and of course we will look at the audiences that went to these uh, plays uh, in uh, 15th and 16th century. Europe. Week number 11 is devoted to Shakespeare. Uh, this lecture will look at the, his life and his works and uh, we will try to understand uh, and give information about this very important uh, writer in English literature. Uh, week 12 we will look at uh, an example of Shakespeare's plays. So we will look at Othello for example. Uh, it's a very famous play um, known in Arabic as Othail because Othello is a North African. He's a, uh, from the Maghreb, uh, Othail, and he's the hero in this Shakespearean tragedy called Othello. So we will have extracts from this play and we will look at the characteristics of the play, the major themes and so on. Uh, week 13 uh, will be reserved for the metaphysical poets who are also very important for the culture of the Renaissance, people like John Donne, for example, uh, who produced novel poetry, new types of poetry that influenced Europe from that point onward. And for week 14, uh, we will uh, leave it for revisions. So that's uh, roughly, week by week, all the lectures that will be presented in this class. As far as the evaluation, uh, of course, uh, uh, you will be evaluated over uh, the final exam, which will constitute 70% of the mark of your grade, 70% of your total grade, and then 30% of your grade will be on participation, which includes attendance, that's 10%, uh, assignments, doing the assignments, that includes 10%, and then participating in the topics discussions, that's 10%. So 30% plus the 70% for the final exam gives us a total of 100%. And, uh, so that's the uh, brief introduction for the course. Thank you so much for listening to it, and I will see you in our first lecture. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi